Good afternoon, everybody. We have a lot to cover today, so let's get started. We found an old newspaper article that we want to do research on. It's on Dorchester Stewart. Come touch it. Feel the beautiful crinoline. They let him take the Krillin skirt with him when he was moved to a state-run facility. That's where he lived until he was 18 years old. So they let him out when he turned 18? No. That's when he escaped. So are we still doing this? Yeah. We're gonna go to Dorchester's house this weekend. Can we come? He had this Krillin skirt that his mother used to make doll dresses with that he wouldn't let go of. Can I be honest with you? I'm kind of really creeped out by being here. So which is it? He dead or alive? Anyone sees you around here, I don't know nothing about it. Nothing. Welcome to Joe for Jeff. I'm Jeff. And I wanted to talk to you about a movie that just came out. It's called Dollface. A uh, pretty good slasher movie. And I watched this and I found out that it is a sequel to a 1995 slasher movie called Crinoline Head. Um, we'll start with Crinoline Head. Uh, it's a low budget slasher movie. Uh, it's probably got the worst title I've ever heard of. And probably the stupidest mask I've ever heard of. Crinoline, uh, for people who don't know what it is, uh, is used in doll making. Now my mother collected dolls so I know what it is. It's the lacy white fabric they put in under skirts to make it puffy and they make the lace out of it. Uh, it's very soft and uh, it makes a horrible mask. Um, I'll give you the plot quick of Crinoline Head. Like I said it's a low budget movie. Uh, it's about a group of kids uh, in college. One of the classmates works for a real estate company and has procured a weekend house by the lake for the weekend and he's invited a bunch of people up and you get the stereotypical characters you get the butch lesbian let me see there's the his history buff who knows all about the uh, murderous that happened at this place um, you got the nice girl the bitch girl the pompous sorority girl and a couple other disposable characters um, I won't spend too much time on this movie that's not the movie you should check out and Nice to say, Crinoline Head is not the worst movie I've ever seen, but it's not exactly the best. And when you make a movie and you have to explain what Crinoline is and how to say it properly, uh, you may have picked the wrong kind of gimmick for your slasher movie. Anyway, okay. They all drive up to this uh, secluded house. Somebody starts offing people. They hear the legend about the killer. It's about a boy who uh, was very close to his mother. His mother made dolls. She has a heart attack. He's stuck there for the entire summer. He ends up eating part of her to survive. Uh, they send him to a mental institution and he escapes. And, oh, he used to wear crinoline around his face to cover his face in shame. Now the guy who uh, brings everybody to the lake house who works for the uh, real estate company, he's crinoline head. And his name is Dorchester. Again, Dorchester? Anyway, so it's revealed he's the killer, he's insane, and he has to wear the mask to cover his shame, although he goes around for most of the movie without the mask. I, I don't understand how he has to wear the mask for shame, yet seems to walk around the house with his friends, no problem. Uh, the kills are stupid. A man is literally killed with celery. Don't ask me how, it doesn't make any sense. Also, um, Abbott, I think his name is, he can't be the killer because the sorority girl and the bitchy girl are out in the woods. 
Uh, the bitchy girl goes back into to the house where they're having a cookout, and the killer is the guy cooking the dinner. He's cooking hamburgers. Well, then it cuts back to the sorority girl, and then she gets murdered. She gets her throat slit. And then the bitchy girl goes to look for her, but the killer was still there cooking lunch. So I don't know how on earth he goes back into the woods with nobody looking, kills her, by the way, gets into costume first, kills her, and then gets back to the house. Um, I think they just made up the ending, quite honestly. And plus the fact that it doesn't really make any sense that to kill people, he dresses up in like black clothing, black overalls, and puts on what looks like a wedding veil as a mask. Uh, it's revealed he's the killer at the end. He's stabbed in the back, falls in the water. You think he's dead. But at the ending scene, he gets out of the water, where you see footprints, and he drives off. That's the end of Criddle in Head. Like I said, 1995, very forgettable movie. They've decided to make a sequel. Uh, came out in two th uh, last week, actually. Uh, it's a much better movie. Uh, this was crowdfunded. I'm not sure on what site. But uh, it didn't cost a lot. And it has Debbie Roshan in it. Uh, the plot is pretty similar. A group of college students. Uh, their teacher is one of the survivors from the first movie. He's going to let the kids do a class project. One of them picks the crinoline legend. He tries to talk him out of it, but they do it anyway. So one of them has uh, stolen a file from the teacher that has all the information on it. They track down the house. They go there to investigate. Some kids from class try to sneak along, try to steal the project. Um, they run into Debbie Roshan, who's living in a trailer on the property. It's kind of come to an understanding they're going to stay there the week, they're going to camp out and investigate the area. Uh, meanwhile, Criddle and Head shows up. Now, what's different about the first movie and the second movie is the first movie was a whodunit about who was Criddle and Head. Uh, the second movie makes no such uh, claim. You know who Criddle and Head is. His mask has changed too. He wears a full doll face, kind of like a little sliver cut out of it, with white wrapped around it. It looks a lot better than the original mask. And it's supposed to be the same guy from the first movie. He's bigger, uh, wears a, has a beard and everything. Uh, they don't really explain where he's been for the last 20 years, but uh, he's still there. Needless to say, as people go out and explore, people start getting off. Um, I don't want to ruin the ending too much, but you can kind of figure out what's going on. It does not have a happy ending for everybody. Some people do. Uh, Debbie Roshan is, like I said, living on a trailer on the property. Um, she's living there rent free. She doesn't want people showing up because she doesn't want the property to sell. She dies. <laughs> um, uh, there are some stupid kills. There's a girl who decides to go to the bathroom in the woods and decides to start twerking and twerks onto a knife. Yeah, it's as stupid as it sounds. Um, a lot of the special effects are decent, but they're not great. Uh, a lot of the characters are unlikable, so you don't care if they die. It has kind of a, a pretty good ending. Uh, the killer does turn into like an indestructible serial killer. This guy takes two shotgun blasts to the chest and is impaled with a metal skewer. And he still gets back up. They never really explain that part either. But if you take it as just a disposable slasher movie, it works. Uh, like I said, this is miles better than part one. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, Debbie Roshan's character is funny. She's kind of dressed up as a white trash. She huffs gas. And uh, she's always trying to get laid. It works on one guy. Uh, she was kind of fun to have. Um, the first movie had a drag queen in it. Just for a few seconds. This one has like three, or two, if you want to get technical. Uh, they get offed quite well, too. Um, they throw in a couple of more dead people. Um, one guy gets pulled under a trailer and killed. Um, like I said, I really did enjoy the movie. You don't have to watch Crinoline Head to watch Dollface. They do a pretty good job of explaining it. Um, I went back and watched it. Really wish I hadn't, but 
it is what it is. So that's my recommendation. I think you should check out Dollface. It's a pretty good movie. Uh, I had a lot of fun, and it, it was made by people who really enjoy slasher movies. The director, uh, I can't remember his name right now, Tommy Faircloth, I think, don't quote me. He's made a couple of other really good movies like uh, Generation X. Uh, he did a short called The Cabin. Really promising, really great stuff. Check it out. If you like the movie, or if you have any comments, please leave them below. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.